So let's get started. Welcome to uh, Games of Go, episode three, where we'll be covering uh, functions, structs, and pointers. And uh, this this week, or this Sunday and Tuesday, I am traveling, so I'm on a laptop in a hotel. So quality might be a little bit less for these two episodes. I apologize, but we'll do our best. <clears throat> if the uh, sound is too low or things are hard to see, let me know in chat. I'll be checking in on it uh, periodically. So <clears throat> let's get VS Code open. And we're going to make a new folder uh, called Functions inside your project folder. And inside there, we'll make a new file. And we'll call it functions.go. And we'll start a new function off just like before, uh, or a new go file like before with package.main which indicates this is going to be an executable uh, that we're going to run. And we'll have our main function as well, which is where the program starts. Uh, so, so far, the only functions we've had in our programs is the main function, which is a special function that tells the compiler, start running here. But you can make more functions. You can make as many functions as you want. So, for instance, uh, we can do one here. You start it off with the keyword func to say you're making a function, and then pick any name you like. And then put the contents of your function between curly braces. So we could do something like this. So now we have a function that will say hello, print hello to the console. And then from any other function, we can call that function. So we can say, say hello. And if we run that, we will see that it says hello. And we can, of course, call that function multiple times. And that works fine as well. Now functions, uh, <coughs> these functions so far have no input parameters. So if you're wondering what these parens are for, in here, you can put one or more uh, input parameters. For instance, uh, we could call one name. And you have to indicate the type of the input parameter. So we're going to take in uh, one input parameter, and it's going to have the uh, name name, and the type is a string. And then <clears throat> that will be as if we have a variable called name inside our function. That's going to get passed in. So now we can use it, and we can say hello to the name that gets passed in. So when we want to uh, use the function now, we have to pass in all of the input uh, parameters that it expects. So it expects a string. And so if we pass in a string, we'll see that it says hello to whoever, uh, whatever name we've provided. So we get hello, Bob. All right. And <clears throat> functions can also uh, combine to call other functions. So imagine we had a say goodbye. Let me let me check it on chat so far. Okay, good. Sounds like the sound is good. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I'll be checking in on chat periodically. I have only one monitor here, so I can't just monitor constantly. All right, so we've got a function that can uh, say goodbye. <clears throat> so let's say we wanted to have a little a, a program that just was sociable, right? So we wanted to say, say hello to Bob. And then <clears throat> maybe, how's the weather? And then we wanted to say goodbye. So there we go. So that, that's fine. But if you imagine we wanted to do this to lots of different people, it's a lot of typing and a lot of repeating ourselves that we'd have to do. We'd have to, you know, maybe we could copy and paste part of it. Then we could be sociable to Alice. 
But that's a lot of uh, repetitive stuff you have to do. And one principle in programming uh, that you'll hear is called uh, don't repeat yourself or DRY. And any bit of advice you hear about programming, you should always take it to be a rule of thumb and not a law, which is to say that sometimes you might want to repeat yourself. It might be the best thing to do. Uh, but usually it is not. And functions are a tool to avoid that along with loops, uh, functions and loops, probably the primary tools to avoid uh, repeating yourself over and over. So <clears throat> we can avoid that by making a function called be sociable. Start that lowercase. And have it taken a name. And then it will call say hello with that same name. Say goodbye that same name and then how's the weather in between and then we can use that function which is combine these other ones we've written to say hello to lots of people with a lot less typing and it is a lot less error prone because we know the same thing is going to happen every time because it's always using our function we're not going to make a mistake when we copy in uh, Wow, terrible spelling. I don't know, how do you spell sociable? We'll pretend it's like this. All right. All right, so now we're having a conversation with Bob and Alice uh, by using functions to avoid uh, repeating ourselves. Any questions so far? All right. So next up is uh, return values. So functions can also optionally return things. Let's do one of the simplest possible functions. We'll do one called add one, and it takes in one input parameter. We'll call it x, and it's an integer. And it also returns an integer. So you can indicate that by just indicating the return type after your function. <clears throat> and then what you can do is you can use the keyword return to return some value at the end of your function. So in this case, we're going to return x plus 1 to add one to whatever we sent in. So let's try it out. Let's uh, make a new variable, uh, x equal to five. And we will say, <coughs> we'll change x, say x equals add one of x. And then we'll try printing it out. And there we go, we got six. So we've <clears throat> used our return value by saying x equals add one of x. Now you can also compose functions. And uh, let me, I'm sorry, let me check chat again to see if anyone has questions. Well, it looks good. Uh, so composing functions is when you just take the re, uh, result of a function and just directly pass it in to another function. So we can do that with the add one function, for instance, by saying x equals add one of add one of x. So what's going to happen here is first, we're going to call this part. We're going to pass x to add one. And at this point, x is six. So we're going <clears> to, <throat> x is going to become seven. And that seven is going to be passed to the next add one. And so it's going to add one again and return that value back into x. And so we should get uh, eight. So let's try it. There we go. So we started with five. We added one, got six. Then we added two by composing add one twice and got eight. So this, this 
concept of functions and the ability of functions to call other functions, the ability to compose functions that have return values. Uh, this is the, the basic way that you deal with really complicated problems. If you have a huge problem where you can't really imagine how to do the whole thing right away, uh, you start with little pieces that you, that you can figure out how to do. Uh, you write functions to do those, and you keep building up. You, you take the simple functions you started with, and then <clears throat> you use those to make your next set of functions, which are a little more complicated. And you keep building up and building up until eventually you have you know, Minecraft or whatever it is you're trying, trying to make. That is the basic idea. Any questions so far? All right. One last thing that we'll just show briefly, and we'll get into it more, is that functions can call themselves. So we'll make a new function called say hello a bunch. And this will print hello. Or in fact, we can just, yeah, we'll just print hello. And then we will call ourself. So if you think about what that might do, you can probably guess what would happen. So we'll just give it a try. Save that, run it. All right, and it's just printing hello forever and ever and ever. And you can hit Control C to cancel that. And it won't quite go forever. It would eventually run out of memory. And we'll get into why that happens uh, and what exactly is going on here. But the, the basic logic is simple. We called the function say hello a bunch. It printed hello. And it called the function say hello a bunch. So everything just starts over. So it is it is similar uh, in principle. And logically, it's identical to an infinite loop. Um, what happens behind the scenes is a little different. And we'll, we'll get into that uh, later. But this idea becomes very important for thinking about a lot of uh, computer science problems. And we're going we're gonna to see it again uh, very soon when we start doing our text adventure. We'll be using some, re this is called recursion when a function calls itself, and we'll be getting into that idea more and more. All right, that is the basics of functions. There are, are more features and things to them, but for now, that is, this is the main idea. So we're going to go on to structs, which are also a pretty simple idea. So I'm, I'm making a new folder called structs. I'm going to make a new file inside called structs. So what is a struct? So we learned uh, last episode about uh, some of the types that are built into Go, uh, like int, int32, float32, string, things like that. You can also make your own types. And, and one way to do that is with structs. And the basic idea is that you can package together uh, different types together in, in one logical thing. Uh, so a common time you might do that, uh, in games especially, is you might need a, a position. You might have a, you know, uh, entities on a grid or in 3D space, and each one's got a position, and you need to represent that somehow. So sometimes you might choose to package the X and Y coordinates, for instance, into uh, sort of one, one type. So what we can do is we can say type position is a struct. And now we've begun to make uh, a new type of our own, right? And this is the syntax for it. Type says we're making a new type. This will be the name of our type. You can be whatever name you like. And then struct says that it's going to be a struct. And then you use curly braces as usual. And, and the, the fields of your struct uh, go inside those curly braces. So for position, uh, if it was a two-dimensional uh, game, you might imagine that there's an X and a Y coordinate. So we can make those uh, float 32s. It is an often used type for position in games. <clears throat> so now we have a, a new type that we've made uh, that contains an X and a Y. So let's uh, make this a real program. All right, so how do we uh, create a new position? So there's a few different ways. 
Uh, one way is you could say uh, var p is a position. And now you've got a position. And we mentioned before how when you create a new uh, variable in, uh, <clears throat> in Go, it sets it, if you don't specify a value, it sets everything to the zero value. And that happens for your structs as well. So if we were to uh, print out the struct, uh, and you can access the fields of a struct, so in this case we have x and y, by typing your variable name p, and a period, then you have access to the things inside of it, like x and y. So if we have a uh, position variable that we've declared called p, and we haven't set anything equal to anything yet, we should expect that both x and y are equal to zero. So let's just text, test that real quick. There we go. We see a zero for x, which is what we expect. So one way you can create a struct is just declare it and then set all the things inside. Okay, so now we see five for x, just like we set it. And that might be the way you want to do things sometimes, but usually you don't, because you might forget to set some of the things in your struct and make a mistake. So another uh, struct initialization syntax would look like this. You could say p is equal to position, curly brace, and then you provide the values of all the items in the struct in order. So if you wanted to set x equal to 4 and y equal to 2, for instance, you could do it like that. So let's run that. And now we see x is equal to 4. Any questions so far? OK. So <clears throat> another thing you might often have in games is some sort of structure to represent uh, a bad guy. I'm going to make this lowercase, actually. Lowercase and uppercase for uh, variable names does have meaning in Go. We're going to just stick with all lowercase for now. All right, so a uh, bad guy might have uh, something like a name, which is a string. Maybe has a, a current amount of health. Maybe that's an integer. And maybe has a position. And we have a position struct already. So we can use that too as a field inside bad guy. So you can put structs inside of other structs, and that's OK. Oh, this should be lowercase. And you can put any number of structs inside structs you wanted to. And so in this way, you can build up uh, more and more uh, complex, complex types. So we could make a new uh, bad guy. Let's, uh, let's say that uh, B is bad guy. Java hut is starts at 100 health. He's got the position P. Bad guy B. All right. <clears throat> so we see that uh, the print line function uh, knows how to handle structs. So it can sort of like go through your struct and print out each field, field in order automatically, uh, which is nice for de debugging things. You don't have to write your own function to print out your structs if you don't want. Uh, so here we see we've created a, a structure, Jabba the Hut, which is name, got 100 health, and he's at position 4P. OK, so structures, you can uh, pass those to functions the same way we passed uh, other, other things. So <clears throat> for example, let's say, uh, where is bad guy? We're going to make a function that takes in a bad guy. And it's going to print out uh, the bad guy's position. So we can do uh, something like this. Uh, let's, let's make it simple looking. So we'll say the x is equal to b.position.x. So in this case, we've got a, a, a bad guy struct b. And so to access the fields of bad guy, we hit dot. And then we have access to health, name, and position. Now, position is also a struct, so to get at the x and y, we do a dot again, and we get the x. 
we can say y equals p dot position dot y. Then <coughs> we wanted to print it out. We can say make it look like kind of a standard uh, coordinate format. Right, so we're going to print an open print. We're going to print the x value, and then we're going to print the comma, and then the y value, and then a close print value. So now we can pass our bad guy to our function, and it'll have access to it, and then it can it can print its its data. So let's give it a try. All right. So here we see that guy is at coordinates four comma two. So uh, okay, a couple of, couple of questions from uh, chat. First was uh, why did when we printed it this way? Uh, someone asked, why does it print those braces? And that's just that's just what uh, that's just the way print line works. When print line receives a struct as an argument, it will put a open open brace or open curly brace at the start of your struct and a closed curling brace at the end. So here we've got the open curly brace for our bad guy struct, another open curly brace for the start of the position struct. Then it closes the position struct, and then it closes the bad guy struct. That's just the way that that print line works. If you want to print your struct in a different way, you can write your own function for it, or you can use the the printf function. Will probably allow you to format it differently. Um, <clears throat> okay. The other question was: If I'm passing uh, the bad guy into where is bad guy, why did you have to declare the b and b bad guy? So if you're going to pass something to a function, you have to indicate it here in the parens. This is where you declare what your input parameters are going to be. So if we did this, you wouldn't be able to pass anything to it. Trying to call uh, where is bad guy here would, would just be an error. So you always have to, to say uh, what you're passing in. And it might be uh, confusing that I happen to use the same letter. So it does not have to be the same letter. They just happen to be. So we could do it like this. Same thing. When when <clears throat> when we pass bad guy to the function where is bad guy, it is making a copy of everything inside bad guy and making a new bad guy inside here named B. And then we're printing the coordinates of that. Does that help? Okay, so are you, are you wondering why we're doing this part here? So this isn't declaring anything. Oh, you're, you're wondering why, why we have the letter B. So this is the name that you're going to use to refer to the thing you're passing. Right, this could be, this could be anything. This could be guy. And then we can refer to the, the first input parameter by the name guy. It can be any name you want. Does that, does that answer your question? Cool. Uh, 